Center. I am speaking with this gentleman right here, Josh Lovelace. How are you, Josh? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so Josh is a keyboard player for the Grammy-nominated band Need to Breathe, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, and we're also going to talk about his new solo album, which is a family-friendly children's album called Young Folk. It sounds awesome. I am a mom. I love this idea. So we're going to talk about that. So, uh, Josh, just briefly, tell me a little bit about your experience with Need to Breathe. I'm mean, super popular. Um, you guys are doing amazing, nominated for a Grammy. Uh, how did you get involved with the band? Yeah, so I, I've been, I'm actually starting my eighth year with the band, which wow. is insane to think about. The band's been around <laughs> for about 15 years, so to think that I've been around as long that long is, is kind of nuts. Um, I've, I've, I've known them for a long time. The other guys in the band actually grew up together, so two of them were brothers, and uh, so they known each other forever. <laughs> and uh, I, I met them on the road playing for, with other bands, and um, and and have been around for a long time. And, and it's really fun. We we get to do some really amazing things, and they they work so hard early, early on, and and we're now able to play some crazy places and. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's a super fun, fun life to live and, and fun band to be in. Awesome. And yeah. here you are, you've done your first solo album really, and it's a children's album. So what inspired you to go in that direction and, and write children's music? Yeah, I've always wanted to do something like this. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a crazy thing. I, growing up, I was really inspired by music. My grandparents were very musical and were very influential uh, in trying to give me some good music to listen to as a kid. And uh, I kind of have kept that my whole life. I've always looked back on those days as, you know, with a lot of a lot of joy and, you know, there's a nostalgia, you know, element to that as well. Just, I had a great childhood and I was very <laughs> fortunate. And I had some people around me that played good music. And, and when I had kids of my own, I kind of uh, wanted to continue that and uh, also to, to kind of you know pay tribute to the, the my grandparents and people that have gone for me, uh, but also um, do something for my kids that is for them. You know even in, you know need to breathe and the thing other thing musical things that I've been a part of. Um, you know I think there's a part of you that does it for your family of course and does it for to so to leave a legacy and to do things that mean a lot to people, but to do something that actually you know literally is for them and and and, and for their age and so that they can enjoy now that they're you know, that my kids are four and one, so they're like oh, perfect age for it yes. so I've always wanted to do it and it's and it just seemed like the perfect time and and I'm thrilled with how it's how it's been received so far oh that's awesome yeah, you've said that you realized when you had kids that you would just make up songs, you know, just throughout the day. And, um, and I love that because, I, you know, as a mom myself, I have a two-year-old and I do it all the time. I'm constantly making up songs and now she's constantly making up songs. So did any of those songs that you would make up end up on the album? Were those like early uh, songwriting buds for, for a song Def that made it on the album? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's kind of crazy. And just in today's world, how you can, document and archive those moments really easily you know i've got a, a phone that has a voice recorder on it so i'm always running around the house if you know if i, if I come up with an idea i grab my phone and sing into the phone and and um and then whenever the kids finally go to sleep and my wife goes to sleep i come downstairs i'm actually here in my basement like little recording studio <laughs> now and just start working and go back and listen to the voice memos of the day and if anything is yeah, some of it is, is is you know pretty terrible, and then some of it's like oh maybe that's something that can you know be useful for other parents or for right. just you know, good memories for for kids. So um, definitely a lot of songs from this record came from those moments for sure. How did you end up picking the subject matter for the songs? I mean, obviously subject matter that is going to relate to kids and what they're going through are different than subject matter that an adult would care about, um, you know, if songs like Eat Your Vegetables and <laughs> Messy Bessie yeah. and these kinds of things, did you, how did you decide what the subjects were going to be for the songs? 
Yeah, you know, I didn't honestly think about it too hard. Um, the biggest thing for me was I had a couple of filters that I would put everything to the test. Well, yeah. One would be, do, do well, first off, do I like it? Is, right. that, is this something that I like? I'm listening to him like, I think I, I, I would enjoy this as a parent. Um, and, and, and also the second filter, of course, was having a focus group of two kids living with me. <laughs> you yeah. know, I time trying things out on them. And also just trying not to be, um, you know, too teachy. And, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to make a record that was trying to teach you how to do everything. And, you know, I, I, I have some great mentors in the children's market that, um, uh, that did that, did that really well. They, they pick songs that they enjoyed and, um, and their enjoyment of the songs was infectious and people <laughs> saw and they, so they weren't, they weren't necessarily trying to teach you numbers and colors, but if you learn something like that through their songs, then that's fine. But it right. wasn't the first thing. So I think that was a big thing too, is just, I, I didn't want to feel like I was being dishonest or trying to sneak a, a lesson. If it, if a lesson happened, it, it, it hopefully it happened organically. So that's, that was, that was kind of the idea anyway. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that because kids are way smarter than you think, you know, <laughs> they know when you're trying to, you know, Sneak in yeah. a message. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And my, my son, he's four. And so he was, you know, he's been around for this whole duration, you know, the whole record. So, you know, I was writing songs for him before he was born. Mm -hmm. um, and one, a couple of them actually made the record. But, you know, a lot of those songs were definitely, you know, some of those voice memos that didn't make the record were songs that, you know, I, he was, he, you know, I might have been singing him and he, but he wasn't responding to him. Mm. And I think that's just the, uh, that's the, for us, I mean, some other kid and, you know, another state or something would have maybe loved it. But I, was, I had to stay true to this is, you know, this is in, intended for my kids and hopefully right. other kids enjoy it as well. But, um, you know, that, that was the ultimate test, at least in our household. <laughs> yeah, it's like you had your own little focus group. Totally. It, was, it definitely felt like that. There yeah. were moments where I was really excited about songs or I, I you know, I, I, like I said, I listen to a song idea and I'll try to take it the next step and the next step, adding drums or adding mm -hmm. things that make it more lively. And there's been times that I would, I would take a song that, you know, pretty far, that distance. And my son just was like not feeling it. And it was, it was a, such a bummer because you're like, I think you need to like this. And he's yeah. like, I don't like this. I can't, I can't like. So that was kind of a wake up call for me to know right. that, you know, that my kid is, is probably smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen to the kids. Well, exactly. that's, the, that's the thing about the album, too, that I, I definitely appreciate. And I think a lot of parents out there will appreciate is that you you say this is uh, an album for kids and their grown-ups, so this is really meant to be enjoyed by the entire family. And and the difference there is that a lot of children's songs are sort of like overly repetitious or overly simplified to sort of target kids in a certain way, and, and the kids sing it over and over again and the parents get annoyed. <laughs> and that was not the goal for this album. No, not at all, and I, I think that, you know, to, we're in a really interesting place in, in the world and in music in general. You know, I, I know a lot of families that uh, that listen to Top 40 radio in their car with their kids, yeah. and their kids are singing every word back. <laughs> yeah. You know, and in some ways, that's it's a really awesome thing because they're like, oh, they're, they're catching on to melodies and rhythms. Some of that's really great, but in some ways, it's 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 a bummer too because it's kind of sad because the subject matter is not for them. Right. It was never it was never meant for them. So to try to find a way to kind of meet in the middle and, and create something, you know, where the subject matter is, in, you know, innocent and also whimsical enough for a child, but also a parent can, you know, think back to when they were that young and and they can re relive their childhood or just like spend time with their kids and not be you just absolutely annoyed, you know, <laughs> yes. to, or, you know, so I think it's, it's trying to find that perfect match, which, you know, I, 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 I think that I, I, I tried to, you know, just scratch the surface of that, but that was definitely the intention is, you know, what kind of record could I put in the car that I love and I, or, or I can, I can stand right. and my kids love it too. And, and, and it's, and it's, also, just it's kind of a nice thing to do something for children yeah. instead yeah. of do something that they can just enjoy, but wasn't intended for them. It's like flipping the, you know, the roles a little bit. And so that's what I tried to do is 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 to make it to where, 
you know, there's no doubt that it's for kids, but right. hopefully it is something that the family can um, adopt and, you know, do something together that um, that creates memories that outlive them and any kind of songs that, you know, that they may never remember Eat Your Vegetables, but they'll hopefully remember <laughs> singing, singing together as a family when they were a kid. That, that would be the ultimate compliment for anything that this record could ever do. So Absolutely. And you really did have an opportunity to involve your whole family on the record. Your wife played flute, I believe, on the album. Your kids' voices can be heard in there. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So yeah, having a, a recording studio in your house is a blessing and a curse. You know, it's nice because yeah. I work when I can, but uh, also having a musical wife is is amazing. And it's also for her. I'm sure she's tired of me asking her to come do background vocals. <laughs> at more. Right. Um, but yeah, she's played she played flute in in, um, in high school, and so she she was really really good. And I pulled her out of retirement to come play on, nice. on this record. And it was really fun. And then my son sang one of the songs on the record that actually is, has his name on it. It's called Henry, My Son. And he's he um, and I wrote it for him, but I thought it would be just really fun to ha have him sing it because he sings it all. He would sing it around the house all the time. So he came down downstairs, put the headphones on, had like a real Gosh. recording studio rock star moment. And uh, we just put it on the, on there because it's just it was just too perfect the way it was. So. Oh, my God. What a special thing for yeah. your family and for your kids to have this when they get older to be like this is what we did with you know this is what i did with my dad when i was a kid it's it's kind of special yeah, yeah I, I i i definitely wanted it to be something that they could keep forever so yeah. you know I, I i i think you know just the way the world is now cds are kind of like kind of out the door a little bit so i was like i want to I feel like, you know, vinyl is making a comeback, so I, mm -hmm. I made sure to press it on vinyl. It's on CD, it's on digital, so it's like, you know, uh, you know, unless, you know, the, all three of those go away, they could hopefully have a copy of it on some format forever. Right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. So you have some cool collaborations for this album. I mean, I'm sure you have lots of musician friends, but um, specifically, you were able to collaborate with Sharon and Bram, who are, you know, obviously famous in the children's music world, Skinnamarinky Dink. I mean, I think we all remember that. Um, what was that like for you? You said you actually really like loved them when you were a, a kid, and then you got to collaborate with them. Yeah, no, I did. So I, I grew up listening to them, and my grandparents, uh, we would watch the Elephant Show as I, uh -huh. when I was a kid. And, um, you know, it was the first, my first real interaction with music and what, um, you know, what music could do to a, you know, to a, you know where your your environment and the things that you do and you're playing and you're singing and and I, I got to see it with them on television all the time and, and experience that with my grandparents and I grew up just you know really you know as I became an adult really appreciating that more and more right. uh, especially being a musician and being in the entertainment industry and understanding the sacrifices that they made to be, you know, children's entertain, you know, entertainers yeah. and children's musicians. It's a very thankless job sometimes. <laughs> you know, when, when you're a kid, you know, they're the best thing in the world. Then you get older, kids get older, and then they're like, well, you remember us? We were we were in your life all the right. time. So it's definitely one of those kind of jobs that it takes a special person to, 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 to do that. And I, I really just appreciated them and got to kind of reach out to them um, with a couple is probably I guess it's been like seven years ago now reached out to them to, to thank them and became you know you know friends and they they've been very helpful with just you know just random music stuff as I even with the band like yeah. you know traveling how do you how do you balance your time and like just right. being able to ask them questions was awesome and so when I, I knew that I really wanted to do this project especially when I started having kids I feel like now's a good time and um, was very caught or very like uh, nervous to ask them to be a part of it but i knew that it wouldn't make it would it it wouldn't make sense to not have them on the, it, yeah. i had to at least ask and <laughs> uh, i asked and, and luckily they liked the song and lois passed away a couple of years ago and but they've been touring you know the two of them for a long time she had gone she, she hadn't been touring with them for a while so they're still very active they're celebrating their 40th year of singing together wow. this year which is insane um, and so it's kind of fun to like 
bring them back into the, you know, and definitely in the U.S., on the U.S. side, bring them back into conversation and, and hopefully people, you know, remember those, you know, have happy memories of their, you know, family and, listen, and listening to the records and watching them and kind of seeing them again. And it, it was, to me, uh, the most, you know, full circle special m moment, you know, of my musical career, just to be able to do something, you know, that you love, but that tied into who you are and who, you, where you came from, and, and see it come, kind of come to fruition. It's, it's really, really, it was a really special, special thing. So. Oh, that is so cool. And you, yeah. you brought up a good point in there too about asking them how to balance this kind of lifestyle. And obviously, mm -hmm. you're very close with your family. You have young kids. How do you balance a tour schedule with a major band and your family? Yeah. It's difficult, you know. I mean, we we just now did a tour in the fall. We did, I think it was fifty seven shows, wow. or fifty seven cities, and in, in like three and a half months or something like that. And you know, as Need to Breathe, Need to Breathe has played over a thousand shows to over a million people in their career. So we've done doing it for a long time. Uh, some seasons have been busier than others, and right. you know, and I think now we're all starting to get to that that phase of our life where we're having kids and we're trying to we are trying to balance that a little bit better mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's definitely a trial and error i mean we we're still you know we thought that we were going to go into last year as more of a, a skinnier you know not as busy year and then by the end of it we were all looking at each other like what did what just happened <laughs> i mean we've been going for three months and you know we got back i think a, a, a six days before christmas and we we're like oh we gotta go shopping like we haven't right. done any we have christmas to do <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that part of it too is just like we're we're we are still trying to figure it out. But I think that the, the good thing is we haven't. I don't feel like we like you know thrown in the towel right, yet. Right. Like we still want to. We're still hungry. We still want to do what we do and do it at a at a high level. And you know, trying to figure out how to um, keep our family at the forefront of all that and 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 making making sure that we're 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 good for our family as well as good for the band. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that for us having the kids on the road has been really fun. Like they're, we get to do really cool things and they come on stage and bring their little guitars and, pretend <laughs> and, cool. and uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's pretty fun. I mean, it is hard to be gone, but yeah. the, the payoff is there are some really cool experiences that, you know, we try to take as many pictures as we can. So, right. so when, when they're old enough to understand, they're not. They don't absolutely despise me for being gone for as long as I, as long as I am. Like, Remember, you got to do this pretty cool thing, you know? Right. Like, you got on. to like record on an album and like come yeah, on stage. Come on. Yeah. I mean, you give, give so me bad. a break. Right. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on to uh, yeah. talk about this. Um, a lot going on with Need to Breathe. You guys are going back in the studio, so we can keep up with you and and everything that is happening with the band and young folk is available right now so all you parents out there with kids if you're looking for an, a, a wonderful opportunity to enjoy some music with your kids you can pick up young folk right now on itunes and josh's website joshlovelessmusic.com josh thank you so much yeah thank you for having me it was fun <laughs> i'm going to take a quick pause and set up for my next guest so stick around thank you